one 6 p.m. meeting of the Johnson County Board of Commissioners. I now call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is approval and discussion of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second it. We've got a motion. We've got a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Next on our agenda is public comment. This is a period where anybody in the audience can address this board on any issue that's not on the agenda for three minutes or less. Do we have anybody that would like to address this board on an item that is not on the agenda? Is anybody in the hall? No one's in the hall. Madam Clerk, any emails? All right. Next item, public hearing, rezoning. Case 2117, I'm going to open the rezoning hearing and call on Braston for the case background. Good evening, Mr. Chairman Board. Um, first case this evening is 21-17, this petition to rezone 1.65 acre track located at 4241 U.S. Highway 70 East in Pine Level Township. From Industrial 1, uh, SUD, Special Use District 2, General Business GB. Owner, applicant is SCD Investments, LLC. Uh, utilities and service, uh, services in this area provided by Pine Level uh, Fire District and Rescue. Uh, the property is currently zoned I-1 SUD, and the special use permit is for uh, basically a chemical uh, chemical business. So this is Kim Station uh, is the name of the business. You may recall some months back, uh, Kim Station actually found an alternate location because they are growing uh, in, a, in the southern portion of the county on high NC-50 north of Benson. Um, so they have relocated, and they are requesting the rezoning of this property to the uh, general business district. Um, traffic along Highway 70, as you may expect, is extremely high. It's 28,000 vehicles per day, and this is a 2019 county. It does appear on the CTP as a boulevard or a freeway leading improvement. Uh, property is in a primary growth area in accordance with the uh, county's comprehensive plan. Uh, staff does recommend approval, and I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Brass? If not, we'll hear from the applicant. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carter Hunt, 1917 Manual Street in Raleigh. And uh, in 2007, we opened this business and I've uh, been very pleased with, with our stay here in Johnston County. As, as you just said, we, we've, uh, we're, we're in the process of relocating. We haven't had final approval on a few little things, but we're getting through those. And, and uh, we'd like to, to lease this building, so we request that we can uh, change the reason or rezone it back to a uh, general business to make it more attractive to the general bi business community. Yes, sir. Any questions for the applicant? I, I do. What was what was in that building before? Was it the vault? It, it was. It was a barrel vault, right? A storage facility. I thought so. And we've been there since 2007, and it's been a great building for us. We've never had any problems. Everything's been great, but we're just kind of bursting at the seams. We've outgrown it. So. Okay. Okay. Any more questions for the applicant? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Would anybody in the audience like to speak for or against? This is a public hearing. If not, I'll close the public discussion portion of the hearing. Uh, Raston, you want to summarize? Give us planning board's recommendation. Yes, sir. As it relates to case 21-17, planning board does recommend approval and offers for your consideration and statement of consistency as presented. Any questions for Braston? If none, I'll close the hearing. What is the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the statement of consistency resolution as presented in this agenda packet and approve the rezoning request for case 21-17. Second. Got a motion, got a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is case 2119. I'm going to open the rezoning hearing and call on Braston for the case yes, background. Case 21 19 uh, involves a rezoning or petition to rezone 15.12 acres or 15.12 acres uh, tract uh, located at a 3300 block of NC Highway 42 West in the Clay, uh, Clayton Township. 
from agriculture residential to general business. Uh, owner and applicant is DTJ Incorporated, utilities and services provided by Claytex Fire District and Clayton Rescue. Uh, property is on AR and currently is a uh, vacant track. Um, I think, believe it is wooded for the most part. Surrounding land uses, uh, there is a residential neighborhood just to the west uh, of this property. There's another business park of uh, a strip business center, office park, uh, just to the, or actually just to the east, and then a residential neighborhood to the uh, to the east, and then the business park is to the west. Uh, traffic concerns on, or traffic for this portion of NC-42 West is 17,500 vehicles per day, and that's 2019 count. And uh, Highway 42 does appear on the CTP as a boulevard needing uh, improvement. Uh, this property is in a primary growth area and, of course, comprehensive plan, and staff does recommend approval. Be glad and, to answer any questions. You have. Any questions for Braston? Hearing none, thank you, Braston. We would like to hear from the applicant. Good evening. My Good name evening. is Marty Gilbert. I live in Clayton at 273C Blue Pond Road. This property, when it was originally purchased back in the late 80s, was purchased as a already subdivided track. Um, as he was saying, the east part of it was going to be developed for residential. The western part of that was going to be commercial. We held on to this piece of property because I'm sure you're familiar, since that is a major artery there, it's not, that piece of property is not developable as residential. Uh, we have already been in contact with DOT, Johnston County Public Utilities, and various people about this property. There will have to be a turning lane there. Uh, we will have access to water and sewer according to Chandra over at Public Utilities. And that's why we're asking for your consideration of ta taking this from residential to commercial. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against? It is a public hearing. Okay. I'm going to close the public discussion portion of the hearing and call on Braston to summarize. Sir, with regard to case 21-19, planning board does recommend a, uh, <coughs> approval and provides for your consideration a statement of consistency. My motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'm, I'm going to close the public hearing, and I'll take that motion, and I'll take that second. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next on the agenda is planning activity report and comp comprehensive land use plan update. Braston, you start the show. Absolutely. Um, so at each of your chairs, I have provided you with a presentation as it relates to an update on the comprehensive land use plan and, and where we're at and where we're headed. Um, so uh, over on page two, you'll see our items. We just have five items to review real quick. A quick project overview, public engagement, uh, and uh, what we look like today, our goal setting, and, and that's probably going to be the maybe the bulk of our conversation this evening, and then our next steps as we're going forward. So if you flip to, I think, slide four there, you'll see uh, the purpose of the comprehensive plan. Um, so comprehensive plan essentially just sets a vision for what our community is going to look like for the next 20 to 30 years. Um, and that's what a comprehensive plan is. It is a guidance document uh, to guide our growth and, and guide other plans and policies as we move forward. Um, so it's focused on land use and infrastructure physical development. And it is, does have that outlook of 10 to 20 years. Uh, and it uh, will include a future land use map as our current plan already does as well. It also provides con some conceptual illustrations of how we want the community to physically look, so how residential neighborhoods should look in particular areas, and we will focus, uh, create a focus on specific areas of the county as we move forward from this, uh, through this plan. Um, we have had people ask how this differs from a strategic plan, um, and we do want to address that. It is, it is distinctly different. Um, so 
typically it has a, a strategic plan has a shorter time frame. Usually that's a, about a five year or, or so, it may extend a little bit further out, may be a little bit shorter. But a strategic plan does have a, a, a much shorter time frame than that 10 to 20 years the comprehensive plan is uh, kind of developed around. Um, it includes, a strategic plan includes uh, other aspects of the organization. So in this case, such as public safety, uh, human services, and, and those types of services unrelated to, un, directly unrelated to land use. And finally, it does, uh, it draws from the detailed, or details from plans that we've already adopted, such as the comp plan and other policies we may have, uh, that this body may have adopted, such as your uh, residential water and sewer service policies. Uh, so your next slide is your three, so we developed three major steps or three major phases for this plan. The first is, is the discovery period, which we've kind of gone through and we've, we're at that point where we're moving just out of that. Um, so that was our discovery. It's data, uh, data compilation uh, and research. We've done some market research, uh, residential and commercial research, and we'll be posting that shortly and, and getting that to you, uh, as well as uh, quite a bit of other information. Um, then we would move on to the plan development, and that's where we're headed now. And when I say the plan development, that may not necessarily mean the printed plan. What that means is uh, kind of those, uh, we're, we're moving more into the strategies. Um, how we're going to achieve the goals that we've identified and we said and we adopt. Um, and so that'll be that phase. And then the final phase, well not the final, the final <coughs> phase of this part would be the documentation where we actually bring these components to you uh, in individual pieces and, and we'll actually do this along the way and not at one time, but we'll bring these components to you in pieces and then eventually in a whole for not only review, um, but also for modification, recommendation, send us back to the drawing board completely, however, however this body and, and, and your planning board um, and planning board looks at it as well. If we need to revisit something, we'll revisit. We want to refine it. We want to make it the best useful tool we have. Um, and then finally, the final phase of it all will be uh, the final review, uh, final public engagement piece, uh, which will be our public hearing and uh, adoption of the plan. So as far as public engagement, uh, so we've established a, a, a good public engagement plan uh, which involves uh, first and foremost a, a steering committee. And the steering committee you appointed and it, it is a representation of our community as a whole. So each member uh, there or each area of the county is represented by someone on that plan or on that committee. Um, and they're They've met once online, so that was our initial meeting, and that was kind of lat or earlier part of this year, and we were still under some modified uh, restrictions. So we did meet online the first time. Since then, we have met twice. Um, and this group is charged with just a handful of items, but the biggest thing is they need to listen and evaluate and share uh, ideas and opinions as they do represent um, the community at large in, in their respective neighborhoods or respective communities um, within the county. They also act as an ambassador to the project. So share information, get the word out, encourage public engagement, public involvement, um, and direct them to website staff or the consultant team uh, with regard to any, um, any feedback the public has. Um, on October 21st, 2021, we did hold a public forum. Uh, this is our first of several public forums. Uh, it was a drop-in session. We held it at the Ag Center um, from 4 to 7. Um, we think it went extremely well. Um, we had around 85 total persons in attendance that floated through. This was a drop-in session. We had several stations, six stations uh, total. And everything from our draft goals that we had developed or that the uh, steering committee had discussed to this point to uh, our land, uh, land use in general, recreation, infrastructure, transportation, it was all there, economic development as well. Um, so we felt like it was a, an extremely well attended uh, event and we got quite a bit of feedback and we continue to uh, see some feedback from that. Uh, the consulting team and myself were still receiving feedback through via email at this point. And our next slide is our online survey. So this is 
probably this is our first piece of community <coughs> engagement that we we launched. Uh, this survey was put out several months ago, um, and we've had uh, over 2,000 responses, closer to 2,200 responses, and we feel good about that number considering we're around 216,000 population. Uh, that's not uh, not too terribly bad. So, we have had more male, uh, more female than male responses, um, and that's not abnormal um, or unusual at all. Um, for whatever reason, just historically, we see with. Uh, these types of surveys or any surveys, you typically tend to get a, a little more female response than male. Once again, um, the, the subject matter kind of may play into that as well. Brandon, so, yes, sir. Uh, before you go to the next, I know at the forum there was some discussion of the wiki maps and mm -hmm. that it would allow the public to go on and basically put their dots and their comments. Yes. Just for that. Where are we at in, in that process? So we're going to continue with that. Um, we will continue that. We're going to post that uh, on our web page uh, along with a separate and distinct uh, survey. So there'll be a follow-up survey to this one. Um, but that'll be posted hopefully very soon. Uh, and we'll have that up in, uh, to the public. Uh, as soon as we get that posted, we'll make sure we get the word out uh, via our social media and other means as necessary to make sure they have that opportunity. But that's a tool we'll continue to use um, for hopefully for quite some time. Okay. Thank you for asking. Right. I appreciate it. So moving on to where we are today, uh, what Johnston County looks like. Um, and so with the plan, we're looking at specific themes and trends. And we have those listed here here for you. Um, it, what you would pretty much imagine for us to, to look at and evaluate to see where we're at and uh, where we're going and what we need to work on. Um, our next slide shows you just have some quick numbers on our population and demographics. Um, as you can see, and as you're well aware, we're a growing county. 27.9% uh, over the last, uh, is that correct? 27.9% or 29.4%, I can't remember. Um, over the last decade, so that's a uh, that's a, a large number. Um, the number you see there in population at 209,000, that is an estimate from 2019. Since uh, that was actually populated, we do know that the uh, census, uh, 2020 census, has brought back some preliminary numbers, and we're seeing we're close to 216,000 uh, people. Uh, that's, a, that's a large number. That's a large number over uh, any given period of time, but uh, especially over a 10-year period, we've seen quite a, bit of, uh, quite a bit of growth in the county. Our median age at 38.4. Um, uh, that's uh, good or bad, just kind of depends, but uh, we do have a workforce. That tells us we have a workforce here in the county. Uh, average household size is 2.75. That is up from the last census that we were... Uh, previously 2.69 uh, per household. Our median hold ha household income is right at $60,000, 59865 uh, is the uh, current estimate, uh, and that is up from last census as well. And there you can see the, um, the breakdown of our, uh, the demographics there. For the That's county. 109%. Yes, sir. How did we get to 109%? I'm sorry? If you add up white, black, and Latino, you get 109 percent. That's a they they do it differently. I can't tell you how they reach that number, but they do it differently. So. Okay. Um, so with our existing land use pattern, uh, our next slide, um, and and just kind of kind of puts things into perspective. We're a large county, around 795 square miles of, of county. Um, that, that's extremely large. I believe second or third largest in the state. 75% uh, of the land in our county currently is classified as vacant or agriculture or forestry. Um, that's, that's a large amount of, of what we would consider undeveloped, undeveloped property. 20% uh, in residential, and this is all types, multifamily, two-family, single-family, um, and less than 2% in, uh, or around 2% commercial and industrial growth um, or industrial uh, land use. Um, that's going to tell you uh, tells you quite a bit. Uh, we have a lot of land. That's true. We've experienced quite a bit of uh, growth, especially residential growth. Um, however, we do need to be concerned about preservation of that land and, and, and being good stewards of that land as well. So you did say 75% of the land in Johnston County is rural agriculture, wetland, not developed. Yeah, vacant agriculture and forestry, yes, sir. 75%. Yes, sir. 
Bryce, do you have a, a breakdown of the agriculture and forestry? Of the agriculture and forestry, uh, we do, but I didn't include it in here. But okay. I can, I can certainly get into it. Okay. That'll probably be at the Farm City Week. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one thing I did fail to mention at the beginning is that this is this is a brief update. Um, we do have consultant couldn't be here tonight. They can't be here on uh, at your second meeting this month, and they will be here in order to give a little more comprehensive update. So we may be able to we'll address that at that time. I'll make sure they have that in there. Um, so moving on to the next slide, urbanization and demand for our services. Um, so this is, this is we asked this in the survey. And as you can see, our responses uh, with regard to growth and development, how do you feel about the pace of growth over the last 10 years? Overwhelmingly, we've, the public says we've grown, or the survey respondent said we've grown too quickly. Um, you know, the, the rate of growth we've seen over the last 10 years maybe probably coincides with that, I would say. Um, then, of course, you see those that have, think the growth has been good or the pace has been good, and then those that uh, really haven't been here long enough and um, those that say it has occurred too slowly. So I think the common theme there is really that we've, we've just gone probably a little quicker than uh, I think the public or our, our residents are really comfortable with. Um, next slide shows your population. Yes, sir. Okay. Obviously, that was a concern with the majority of residents. Mm -hmm. What control, I mean, basically what I'm saying is, is that the market controlling that? Is that this board controlling that? Combination well, of both? A yeah, little of each? So I think it's a little bit of both. Um, and I don't want to get too far too deep into that now. We'll get into that uh, for certain. But I, I think it is a little bit of both. Market has a tremendous amount to do with it, and obviously location, road structure. Yeah, it, exactly. It's something we can't control, obviously. Right. Okay. Um, market kind of dictates a lot. Um, however, pace of growth sometimes is is ease of, of of moving through your regulatory or entitlement process. Sometimes it's also the availability one avail availability of land How you, you can't lay it to one item you can't lay it to one no, obviously it's, it's a desirable place to live absolutely and there's multi factors that's made it desirable absolutely as not isolated to one as far as the percentages of growth is is would you suggest that Hornet County Sampson County are seeing something similar or has Wake County affected us so much that we're the tip of the spear or whatever. Well, currently, according to the 2020 census, we have grown faster than any county over the last 10 years. And um, I get I get that same question. It's it's with your proximity to Raleigh. It's nothing anybody's done. There's no way to really wave a flag. I said, well, there's a bunch of counties that surround Wake County. Sure. We're the fastest growing. Well, you've got the road system. We've got the rail system. We've, that's what I was getting at. We've got yeah. all the dynamics, not laying it to one specific issue. That's correct. Absolutely. Um, so we are, I mean, we are a very uh, desirable area to live. We're, you're, you're extremely close to a large employment center uh, in the region of the state. Um, that helps um, the bang for your buck, if you want to call it that, uh, looks a lot better than it does when you look in Wake County, especially for workforce housing. Um, so, and we may see some numbers later, and we will talk about it later, maybe not necessarily this presentation, but we will get into a little more detail when the consultant is here on the 15th with regard to what our workforce looks like, you know, who's living here, who's working here, who's living here, and who's who's commuting each day, and who's commuting in. We have, we do have people commuting in on a daily basis. You know, to me, Mr. Chairman, th this is a very difficult process because if there's one thing I believe in in government is freedom. And I think the one thing, if there is one single item driving that growth, is the fact that we've allowed people to, to have freedom and we've not been so restrictive in our approach to this. And I think this whole process probably smacks of imposing restrictions. You know, all these people are concerned about too fast a growth. I'm concerned about too much growth. At some point, the theater gets full and you can't, and the fire marshal won't let anybody else come in and see the movie. But it's it's a rub against that freedom issue it really is but it's very encouraging to hear 75% of the county is the county me and you grew up in yeah 
So yeah, it's not right. it's 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 not polarizing as it seems to be. Yeah. Yeah. And there's other considerations to think about when you when you think about the impacts of growth. Um, one, we have resources. Those resources are being used the more we grow, obviously, and we want to make sure we're you know we're we're keeping pace with that, and, and make sure we're we have adequate resources in the future for a growth that will occur. Um, well, obviously, with the roads, schools, and utilities, no one builds a school hoping we fill it up. No one builds a road hoping someone travels. <clears throat> they always lag. It's it's when it gets here, then we accommodate. But they're always yeah. going to be behind. But we look at the numbers that's been spent over the last 20 years on education and school facilities, community college. It's astounding, but it's going to lag. Mr. Chairman, let me. I've I've been to uh, conventions that have discussed this issue. Let me share with you what I learned. And of course, Commissioner Wood talked about the real elephant in the room, which is the city of Raleigh, which is one of the greatest cities in America, and as close as we are there. But apart from that, <clears throat> this was at a, um, basically at a cattleman's conference, which is where this was going on. And, but it was an environmental group that was talking about <clears throat> the cause of what you're talking about. He says there's three reasons there. And if, if we don't acknowledge these three reasons and understand these three reasons, we'll have a, we, we will, I think we'll get to the wrong place. The first reason is obvious. The increase in population, jobs and people naturally you have growth which is development so that's one reason this was all about how we lose agricultural land which is the 75 percent you talked about there so everybody's got that but the other two reasons are pretty important and if you don't understand those other two reasons you have a hard time getting to the right place if people are losing money, and I'm the only real farmer in here, so I can tell you, it's, it happens. If people cannot be productive and profitable at agriculture, they're not going to farm and pay taxes to lose money. So in America, we have basically a cheap food policy and we have a lot of farmers especially in North Carolina where we have small fields versus the large fields out west that that, that people can't make a profit on their land and what many do is they work off the work off the farm to subsidize their their farm, but that's a real cause of people not being able to continue to farm and keep their farmland. And I don't think we as a society have a right to say, we really love to see your farm and it's fresh air and got trees and all that and you need to lose money so that you, per so that you keep it there for all of us to enjoy. So I think we need to realize that that's a big problem about maintaining agricultural land. The third problem, though, is really an important problem, and that is most of the farms and most of this agricultural land is owned by people almost over 60 years old. And we're going to have a transfer of agricultural land from one generation to the next generation. And where does the next generation live? They don't live on the farm. They live in Raleigh. And they don't want to, they don't understand farming. And, and somebody comes along and says, I'll offer you a big price for your land. 
And so they sell it, take it to Raleigh, where they can live a better lifestyle. And so between the inability of farmers to be profitable and the generational transfer, that's one of the main reasons that we will see, in addition to growth, that we will see agricultural land continue to shrink in America. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, as what Mr. Commissioner Smith said, I, I agree with all that. <clears throat> but I think it's also very important when we get this study back and going through this study that we continue to focus on what the county is charged with. You know, there are some things we do that, you know, I don't feel we, we've ever been charged with, but schools, uh, safety, you know, and I think some of these things that we need to stay focused on and know that that's our responsibility and not get off in the weeds somewhere and lose sight of what we, what we do what we charge to do. Once again, I wasn't I wouldn't say we were responsible for what I said. I was just trying to help no, no, him I, answer as to the, the fundamental reasons that we're having to, that why we're losing agricultural land. Well, we all agreed in the beginning that we're paying, the citizens are paying a lot of money for this study. And I think, Mr. Smith, I've heard you say it, and about every member of this board at some point in time say it, this is going to be a very important document and one of the most important things this board does. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be here to see it through, but I'm still going to be a resident. And obviously, I love the county. So um, continue on. I, I, did, I did have one more oh, I'm sorry. while we're talking. If, if you would, I don't know if you want to flip back in yours to the urbanization and demand for services, the project survey where it had the 75% or so thought of growth had occurred too quickly. Yeah. Is there a breakdown of where those numbers, it was that generally painted all over the the county and actually, I guess, the number of surveys, were, where were they, were they equally distributed throughout the county or was it concentrated in the western part or do you know that? Don't know that offhand, okay. but we can get the data for you. Yeah, it would just be interesting to see how the, what that graphic looked like. I suspect that was well, the is added of it is in the survey. The <laughs> we asked, we, we, like we did ask called. where, kind of where generally you were located in the county. So if you are you in the western portion of the county, northern portion, east, south. So, so that's yeah, data you, you we have, have. Yeah, you'll have a good, you'll have a good idea. Essentially, you know, everything west of 95, east of 95. We will we'll know from that perspective. Because I, I would, I would think that it is, as we look at our county, in kind of two counties in one is there are folks probably in the eastern portion of the county who would like to see some growth maybe not to the extent that's in the western but i was just curious if, if and if we can't get the breakdown of that i'd greatly appreciate it Thank yeah it, it's probably that was probably one of the harder questions to to really grab any focus on because the, and your because your answers can be so so different uh, just depending on where you live and, and and what's occurring in your in your particular area, and and, and we all know it's 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 basically about understanding. And sometimes you get you get locked down with what you like and what you don't like, or what you're frustrated with, or what you're not frustrated with. With when you miss the total picture. And I was reviewing social media today, which I rarely do, but because we had our economic incentive announcement this morning. And a guy put on a very long, detailed, realistic approach. You know, um, everybody wants the amenities, and especially I represent a rural area. And they want to know when they're going to get internet, when they're going to get a grocery store, when they're going to get a restaurant. And I said, when you get more houses. Well, we don't want that. Sorry, that's the way it comes. Now, the ones that have that, take, then they take it for granted. We've got internet, we've got cell phone service, we've got grocery stores, we've got amenities. What are you going to do about this traffic? It is a balance. It is a balance. You know, it takes it all. Grocery stores and amenities just don't show up in a very rural area. They follow the houses. And then the ones that have it are frustrated with the other things that it brings. It's just a balance. You know, one of the interesting things that when, we, when you study this is you look at all the, the things that this board stands for, lowering taxes, good governance, uh, cutting red tape for business, trying to be a streamlined process. All those things actually excel the growth because that's things that you don't find in other areas surrounding us. While other counties were increasing their tax rate, we were lowering ours. And so it's, uh, you know, that, that 
to me, uh, coupled with the things that Commissioner Smith outlined about the farming industry, and I know people who farm, and they do all work outside jobs somewhere else. They'll, they'll work full-time there and farm part-time back at home. And so all that coupled together, it just creates this situation that we have that uh, it is definitely a challenge. We're dealing with. There's no question this board, can, it can face the challenge, I'm convinced. So just wanted you to, uh, we have a small chart in here uh, as it relates to our population e estimates and projections. Um, so there's two organizations here, or two entities we looked at, and we did a comparison of what they are projecting for our growth in the future. One is the North Carolina Office of State Budget Management, um, in the state, which houses the State Demographer's Office, and then, of course, the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, you know, as you can see, you still were projected to grow quite considerably, and these two agencies do not agree. So, you know, the Census Bureau is looking out at 2040, we're around 230,000. Office of State Budget and Management is around 309. I'll just say, Office of State Budget and Management was probably a little closer from our uh, population projections for North Carolina, for Johnson County from 2010 to 2020 than the Census Bureau was, over the, or the American Community Survey was. So, that may vary with, you know, regard to any 10-year period or any 10-year cycle, but I'm just saying it's, we're looking somewhere in, in that neighborhood of between a 48% and 10% increase in population from now until 2040, and that's pretty staggering if you really think about it. Um, but that, that's, that tells a, you know, tells what, a, what, what's staggering to you here? So uh, just looking at 48% over, over a 20-year period, um, that's a sustained, do the average, that's 24% over, the, over two, de two decades, so 24% each decade. We're 20, 27 now uh, over the past decade. We were just shy of 20% or around 18, 19% in the previous decade uh, prior to that. So it, it, it's, you're seeing, we're, we're seeing a, that's a pretty staggering number. That's just a big number to me. It's, in terms it's of too small. Again. I'm, I'm telling you that number's too small. And that number shows from 2010 to 2020, it's going to grow about 50,000 people. And we know from the building permits that have been issued what's happened. I mean, we're, we have, this county has accelerated. Our, our growth in the next 10 years between 2020 and 2030 will, will be closer to 75,000 people to 100. So I think, I think, that's something we have to plan on. It's like I told the school board, they underestimated the demand that's going to be there. And uh, if you look at, at the growth we've had in the past 12 months, and, and, and then take that on out, Braston, I think you'll see that these, are, these numbers are underestimated rather than overestimated. And they very well may be, but it's, it's still a large number. And what I'm talking about when I say it's staggering, it's staggering in the terms of having to keep pace with it. Um, so that's our resources, the infrastructure we have, that, I and mean, just trying to keep pace with that. That's, that's a difficult, I mean, that's not saying it's insurmountable, it's not doable, but it's a, it's a pretty big task. It's a large, I, large task. I, I don't know why you think that's a big task. We have, we have the resources. We have 49 percent of our 49 or 50 percent above our our budget uh, in cash. We have we have great mm -hmm. staff and employees. I mean, we're 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 up to we're up to the task. I I don't know. Well, and there's no question that we're presenting. I mean, yeah, we, we can handle it. He, yeah, just I, saying, yeah, I'm just it's saying it's alarming. It's, it's, and, I'm not and, saying it's, un, it's, it's not, not doable. I'm just saying it, it's a it's and a You're saying you got to work at it. That's right. And the Welcome boy, to the real world yeah. that oh, most absolutely. of us live in. Yeah, yeah. The, boys between, the board's before us yeah. have set the pattern, and this so board's continuing to Does it make any difference, though, that 75% of the respondents don't want it to keep continuing that way? 
Well, that was a good question, Mr. Lauder asked. We'd like to know which, who. Which who, one who, of your who, farmers who, is losing who, money, Ted? Yeah, you're going to tell them they can sell their land. Oh, I know. I know. I and, and, and we all know America had to grow. We all know that Raleigh was a tobacco field. Okay. I mean, they did it. It's doable. You're right. You're right. It's just a matter of getting the plan out. I just want to support a note. I lived in Raleigh when there were 30,000 people. Did well, you, you can speak to that? it better than I can. I, I watched them clear the land for Cameron Village. There were 30,000 people. When I went to Wake Forest University, there was no belt line. And you look at where we are today. I mean, it's just, it's just, we can say that we don't want what we want or don't want because nobody likes their cheese moved. But we can look at what's happened in the past and we can prepare for it or we cannot prepare for it. Well, I think that's what we're doing. That's part of this process is preparing. I think there's, I think we're going, like we've all discussed, get the growth. I just, I just think our task is to manage it, to uh, steer it to directions it needs to be steered. Or, and I think or, we're doing a good job with that. We're on the, we're on the board of having three schools built and the bond referendum put out there. We just heard this morning about our water and our wastewater expansion. And um, once again, infrastructure comes last, and that's just the way there, it is. You don't build it and wait for them to come. You wait for them to come, and then you, you fight to keep up with it. And we've I, done a great job of that. I think you're right. I think our job is to make sure that when it comes, there's quality. Yeah, we, right. we're, there's we're charged quality. with quality of life in this county, and and that we demand. And I truly believe we're be doing that. We're doing that in all areas, rather than not quality growth. That's what we, I believe, have the chance to make happen. And that's right. But you've got to understand, and you do, how it works. We are now widening 42. Well, I rode up there today. They said this ought to have been done 20 years ago. Well, that's not the way it works. They're not going to widen the road and say, I hope this area grows, or we project this area to grow, but then it don't. It's there. But the state is upholding their responsibility. They're finally getting the road system in order. In other areas, they'll do the same. It's, it's a process. We will get through it. We will grow, and we will be, hope to be the be most desirable county in the next 10 years to live in. Yeah, when... I just, when we talk about traffic, I, I would welcome you to have a truck and a trailer with three bulls on it trying to deliver them to Alabama and get around Atlanta. You would love to live here. There is no way to get through Atlanta <laughs> in less than an hour. Okay, let's get on to the subject. Good idea. We'll go to the next slide. So uh, this next slide is kind of a comparison of your of what your tax base is comprised of in terms of your land use and then your actual land use. You see you have, once again, 75% of your land use is that agriculture, uh, agriculture, forestry, and, and, and vacant top lands, but that comprises seven or 55% of your tax base. Um, so you've got a little bit of a, you know, you, is you have to look at tax base or are we evenly distributed or equitably distributed and are we putting too many too many eggs in one basket but um but once again some of it's market driven you are a desirable place to live and that's where we're at um and commercial and industrial uses typically just a, a smaller amount of that can actually add add greater tax base than than four or five times or a much greater amount in in residential Perhaps, um, let me be sure i understand this thing yes sir is, is what we get from this is <clears throat> that 8.7% of the land is single family homes and they pay 55% of the tax. It makes up 55% of your tax base. Yeah. And our uh, agriculture uh, makes up 75% and it pays 12% of the tax. Yes, sir. That's correct. I think that number, that 75% needs to be defined as far as vacant land versus what you're actually con <clears throat> contributing to agriculture. I don't think it's going to be the 75%. All, all, all agricultural, vacant land and agricultural land is taxed either as farmland or woodland. And you qualify for present use value and all the, all the land 
that qualifies for agricultural has one tax rate in the county. The forest land has another tax rate. And so... So they don't buy and sell tires and tractors and stuff in Johnson County and pay other taxes that contribute to our Sure, we were just talking about base. real, real, real property taxes. Ad valorem tax. That's, that's what this chart is. That's what I was talking about. I see it. Yes. Gotcha. That's great. All right, next slide. So when we talk about um, our growth, uh, we look at housing. We all know housing is uh, housing in this market. Is, it's a huge, huge market for us. Um, we've experienced the growth, and we know the cost of housing is going up. Um, so that's a concern. Um, and I think uh, Commissioner Smith has actually mentioned it before. Our workforce housing uh, is an issue for us. Um, we don't want to create a gap. You don't want to have that gap to, that you can't meet um, when there's, you know, definitely a need for it. And we don't want to outprice ourselves to those who not only are looking to move here, that we're those who are already here, um, essentially the gentrification in some situations. So, um, but uh, I think that's a pretty, some, uh, a pretty telling number there, 18% increase in, in housing costs since uh, from June 20 to June 21. Were you going to talk about anything about the water and wastewater? Yeah, there was two slides in there. You, we'll, we'll come back to those. Okay, if okay. you don't mind. Yeah, I think they were just wanting to come back to those. Okay. Um, so, with regard to housing, uh, our housing and household structure um, evolving, uh, as you can see, married couples, uh, married couple households have remained largely flat since the late 70s. It's just a different. Uh, uh, Household types have looked different, looked different now than they used to. Um, there's more single parent households. There's households without children. Um, so that, that tells us what the housing needs. Uh, so we may be looking at more non-traditional, um, we have, are looking at more non-traditional household types. And that's going to require a need for, in some situations, much smaller, uh, maybe smaller lot single family uh, homes, town homes, and apartments, so you're going to have a different mix or a different type or a mix of housing types uh, in the county, specific areas in the county. So as a county urbanizes, or as any area urbanizes, you see that change. You see that change from larger, larger parcels, single family dwellings, to a greater housing type mix. And, and we've seen that in certain areas of the county, especially in the western portion of the county. Uh, we've seen that occur. We know the demands there. We, you know, we get the calls on a daily basis, but um, that was extremely telling. Braxton, I'm just curious. Do we have any data on square footage of houses? What kind of is there any trends that or any knowledge that can be drawn off of that data? As far as um, there is some data. We'll I'll make sure that's included next time. Uh, we can get into that uh, a little bit. But there is some data as far as national data, and we could probably get some that's more uh, the metro, you know, metropolitan statistical area as far as the average house size in, uh, in our area in that MSA versus what it was, say, 10, 15, 20 years well, ago. Well, I mean, even with square footage or lot sizes, that sort of gives us a better idea of what people are actually in the market for, and I mean that 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 would help me make my decision on future. <clears throat> Absolutely, we can get some market data for you as well, and we have some of that. Um, so no oil no oil consulting actually produced or did a uh, residential and, and uh, commercial market study for us, and we'll be we'll be getting that to you as soon as, as, soon as we can. Getting that posted online as well. Thank you. Um, so I just, now that you mentioned, I do want to back up real quick to the back to urbanization and demand for services since we're here. And I didn't mean to skip over those, but I wanted to make sure we got the housing in. Uh, the, so when we look at our water supply, and I've talked quite a bit, and we've discussed in steering committee um, our water services, water supply, and, and wastewater uh, system. Um, as you can see, water services, uh, based on the demand and our current supply, and our, uh, as you can see, the gray line, there's our supply total, and that current projected demand, um, 
looks like we have around in 2023, 2024 in that time frame, we're going to have a greater demand than we are capacity. Um, that's projection. Um, if we remain at the current growth levels or rate of growth we're at now. Um, Chandra Public Utilities, that department, obviously they're keeping their managing that water supply as well as they do all of our infrastructure. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, for some reason it's hit. I'm not really sure why, but it's okay. hit in there. Okay. Um, so they have, obviously your demand may exceed what your current capacity is or your projected capacity is. However, through agreements with other other suppliers of water water resources, we'll be able to hopefully manage that. But um, obviously, she does water supply plan, or public utilities provides a water supply plan uh, with some frequency, so they're on top of that. But that just shows you what the what the demand is for that water and how soon it's going to be a, you know, how soon we could be at that tipping point where we're going to exceed our capacity. I would just say, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons we entered into that regional study is look at our options uh, for water and sewer. I know we do a lot of, have a lot of conversations about sewer, but obviously if we're looking at 2023 uh, running out without finding additional sources, that's that's pretty mm -hmm. critical and limiting to our, our growth. So uh, just another reason for us to get that regional study in and and having agreements in place to do something about it. So in the next slide, so your, your, well, your, so the wastewater, that 20 year, we're looking at 20 year flow projections. Once again, we already know we have a 9.5 million gallon a day plant and um, we're under contract uh, to expand that plant now. Um, obviously, you know, capacity in that plant is concerned, especially as we continue to the western portion of the county continues to urbanize, which was where the bulk of our collection system is. Um, we know we've, we've got room for improvement there, and obviously with this uh, expansion project and a, and a subsequent project behind that one, um, we are keeping pace with that. Uh, let's go forward a couple of, oh, for some reason it's skipping some of them. So there's one slide you have it's called uh, entitled vision input. So it was a question in our survey um, and it's question 10. So in the future, what types of uses uh, should the county discourage? Um, once again, overwhelmingly, you're, when you're looking at types of housing uh, or types of uses, uh, the, focused on, the focus was on housing, multifamily apartments. Um, they said that's, the community said we should really discourage apartments. But that's just, that's the response of, out of the 2,200 we had, it was, uh, that's pretty, pretty large a number, I think. Um, and then the one that was least, uh, or the least percentage was industrial and manufacturing uses. Um, so we not necessarily discourage those. So it's interesting to me that, that the apartments and townhome and condominiums were the two highest ones. But yet 12.3% indicated housing variety and quality as a shortcoming. And then industrial manufacturing uses, but yet 15.57% of the people identified lack of employment opportunities as a shortcoming. I don't understand that. Why is it? That, that's a really good question. So when you look at housing, housing type may be, it could be subjective for some. Um, it could mean type of specific single family as opposed to you know, maybe look more at aesthetics or, or type of construction as opposed to the whether it's multifamily, single family, two family. Um, so that may be a question. That may be a question. Like I said, these are general questions, but I think what it tells us is, we're, what it indicates is that the public would like to see not see maybe as much multifamily housing. However, where your urbanization is, you've got to look at having your housing clustered in a manner in which you have a walkable area, you can put as many people in a smaller amount of space, otherwise you're just in encouraging sprawls to occur. And once again, it's not what, it, it, I, I hate to say this, it's not what we want. I mean, it's, it's what the people that potentially move here, which will be our customers, it's what the market dictates for. I mean, you got to be real careful going down the path of saying everybody's got to live in a half a million dollar, 5,000 square foot home, if they'd even buy that now, I don't know. But, um, 
you know, single moms, single dads, firefighters, school teachers. I mean, they have to live somewhere, and they don't want a yard to keep up. So you, and, and once again, the market knows what they're looking for. They know the trends. They know what's desirable. Now, granted, I'm with the 75% of the people, whatever that number was. I wouldn't think you'd have multifamily housing out in rural areas. But, you know, we've got 11 municipalities, and that's a great place for them. But you, you can't be so discriminatory on 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 houses and apartments. Well, again, a little history lesson. 50, 75 years ago, 10 or 20 percent of the housing was rental, 80 percent was owned. And generally, the people who rented were, quote, I don't, I don't want to use a bad word, I mean, just uh, people didn't didn't weren't wild about having rental in their neighborhood. And fast forward that to today, we're now approaching 40 percent of the houses, or the the units that people live in in America today, are rental. Only 60 percent, just a little over 60 percent, are owned. And affordability is is important and people either are going to live on the streets or they're going to live in an apartment or a town home which is what they can afford today if you look at that slide that Braston gave us if we go back and uh, see which one talked about this slide right here if you look at this slide right here, it says, <clears throat> over the f past five years, housing prices have risen more than twice as fast as wages. So when houses are going up twice as fast as wages, and you have a single mom who has to have a place to live, they, their only choice is an apartment or a townhome. And we don't need to discriminate against those people. And we don't need to be elitist and prejudicial against people who need a decent place to live and don't have the wherewithal to live in a half a million dollar house. And a half a million dollar house isn't but so big today. <laughs> We're looking at responses back from the general public, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, realistically, uh, they're, they're looking at a response from the way they feel or what they think, you know. Absolutely. And so, nothing scientifically about it at all, what okay. their thinking process may or may not be. And so, uh, I think it's great for input, but again, you know, in making decisions, we sometimes can't let other people make decisions for you. Um, well, most of the time we up here can't do it. But I, I think it's thought, part of the thought process, but surely that's all it is, part of the part of the piece of a puzzle that eventually that you folks got to put together and then we got to finalize putting it together. It's just one of the parts there. Uh, it depends on where you, uh, where you sit. It is based on how you stand. So, you know, if, if, if all of them came from one area, it's going to be very convoluted. Uh, but I, I think we got a pretty good mixture now, myself. I think we did a pretty good job. And But if you look at the numbers uh, of what's projected in census numbers to, to come, we got to do even do better job. We got to be prepared. Because if we look back at the last uh, comprehensive land study in 2008, 2006, nine, nine I was here, but you know it's changed so dra drastically in in the 12 years that it's going to and 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 I imagine the folks who sit up here uh, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, will have the same the same problem is that they got to look at it again. So we're just using components to make. Decisions is basically, we're not saying they're right, we're not saying they're wrong, we're just saying this is just the part of the survey. Mm -hmm. 
So then that, that leads perfectly into this next slide, which is uh, a component, maybe a component and result of housing. So if you look at the, uh, the jobs and especially the commuting, um, that commuting population, you see that 50% of all commuters uh, in our county drive 30 plus minutes to their job each day, one way. It's a pretty big number. So obviously you want to you want to have affordable housing. You want to have workforce housing available and an adequate supply of that in, in order to make sure that this number doesn't grow. Obviously, the more the more time they they're on the road, the more need for roads to be widened, the more maintenance that has to occur. Uh, you get into the you know the discussion and um, about carbon footprint and you know those types of things. So yeah, it, it's a it. it Leads exact, it leads into that same conversation about housing and where it needs to be and what type it needs to be and how, how dense that needs to be. To me, this is pleasantly a, a pleasant surprise because moving led to Chris Johnson, uh, 27,000 coming in from out of the county. That's higher than I would have thought. It's a, it's a fairly large number, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, moving on, so we have our connectivity and mobility. Um, Obviously, traffic's a concern in the county. The condition of our roads, the uh, capacity of our roads is a concern. Uh, and this just shows you some high, higher volume corridors and, and, and roads within the county. So obviously, I-40, I-95, and we do have major projects occurring there. Um, the I-40 widening project with, uh, with, with some like that will be over in, in just a few years, short years. Um, and then I-95 as well is being widened. Uh, in the southern portion of the county, uh, also. Um, obviously, other high high volume corridors are U.S. 70, uh, U.S. 70, U.S. 70 business, NC 42, and U.S. 301. Uh, when we look at, and, and there was a slide we kind of went went past earlier, um, but if you look at where our growth is in the county, where our, that density is occurring, we see one of the higher higher growth corridors being that U.S. 70 corridor. It, it, it's grown at a pretty large rate over the last decade, and obviously that that brings us to the need to um, transition or or bring U.S. 70 up to interstate standards for the future I-42. Um, so, our, basically, one thing this we'll get into later in on the 15th at, at the 15th year uh, 15th meeting is consulted to speak a little more in depth about uh, some of the road projects and road needs. And how that actually transpires, and obviously, I think everyone here is uh, is familiar with the uh, state programming, um, state programming. So it, it it's not something that moves quickly. Um, usually, it takes generally between seven and ten years for a project. By the time it goes, it actually is included in the uh, state programming to the uh, actual letting of the contract. Um, so it does take time. And uh, Commissioner Stewart's or Chairman Stewart's uh, comment earlier is. Is sometimes that is behind the curve, and that's historical. You know, it, it's I hate to say it's reactionary, but that's about the only term I can really think of to, to put to it. Um, agriculture and forestry. Uh, this was mentioned earlier. Um, so, 94 percent of the land, uh, agricultural land, is enrolled in in the present use value program, and that's in unincorporated areas of the county. That 94 percent. So the other six percent that's enrolled in PUV or that present use value program is in the municipal boundaries or uh, municipal limits. Um, so the ag agricultural census is done uh, on a five-year cycle. Uh, and the last was done in 2017, um, but the 2012-2017 showed we actually lost uh, land in farms. Um, however, our net net income from farming went up by seven percent. So, there there are several factors, maybe several factors in play there, um, but that's that's an interesting uh, interesting tidbit of information there. Uh, moving on, the next uh, slide. So, our next question on our survey. Um, was this, uh, please rank the following items in order of importance as they relate to Johnston County's future, one being most important, 10 being the least important. As you can see, farmland, forestry and farmland protection was ranked number one in importance for future at Johnston County. Um, and once again, based on 20, 22, roughly 2,200 survey members, and they're scattered from all over the county. 
next we have I'll combine this since for some reason it's skipping over it on the on the screen. You have rural landscape and open uh, open space conservation and a recreation and tourism. So there are 27 designated natural heritage uh, areas or, uh, in Johnston County. Um, obviously everybody's aware of those bottom lands. Um, but we have uh, quite a bit of natural resource uh, within our county and, and, and that's something we need to focus on as well. And that was a focus of our previous plan or our current plan. It, no different. Um, we just need to we just need to kind of refocus those efforts a little bit there. Uh, recreation and tourism. Uh, we've done we've made some strides here in the last several years, the last half decade or so. So in 2015, the uh, uh, county adopted a master uh, a master plan for recreation and tourism in the county. Uh, that since been updated, uh, and we've done something, or this body's done something that uh, hasn't been. It ever been done before in this county. You hired a, a parks recreation uh, and greenway or parks open space and greenways coordinator um, to kind of spearhead this effort of, of maintaining and creating or creating some parks uh, and greenways within the county. We are extremely fortunate in that we have two major greenways uh, that run uh, through our county, uh, the east and west and north and south. So we have the east coast greenway which is our north south corridor or Greenway and then the Mountains to Sea Trail. Now for our goal setting, um, if you move to the next slide, we have some draft goals here uh, that have been discussed and, and there's some consensus on from the steering committee. Uh, there are 14, however, I would bring to your attention that item 7 and 8 um, after uh, further review in the steering committee is recommended maybe combining those two as one. Um, I'd, I'd like for you to take a, a moment over the next few days, week, whatever at your leisure and, and read through these and just provide us some feedback. Tell us what you think. Do, are these applicable? Um, or, or some, are they relevant? Are they irrelevant? Is there something that needs to be modified? Just provide us some feedback on that. We'd appreciate that. Uh, so I'd like the same to, ones from the previous. From the, yes, from okay. the public forum. Yes. Okay. Uh, so these goals are. Um, we did get feedback on these, and 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 we will be may see some modification in this, based on the public input that was provided at the public forum, because uh, that's yet to be uh, yet to have been really uh, analyzed and applied yet. But we will do that. Uh, but I would like uh, for this body to. Take a look at those, examine those, and provide any feedback you may have on those. I would like to say that we, these were all created from scratch, but they were not. Um, so the process we went through, we analyzed and looked at the, pre, the current goals in our current plan and determined were they legitimate, were they relevant, did we want to keep them, did we want to toss them, did we just need to simply modify them, or, or what have you. Um, so with that, we, we started there as a basis, and this is what we've ended up with. Some are difficult to reconcile. Today. For example, number three, develop quality, development quality has improved and remains high, but then number five, housing variety includes product, place, ensures more choices and affordability. You know? Yeah, I, I don't know that there's necessarily a, a direct correlation between quality versus affordability. I think you can have affordability with, with quality. So it's it's all about the amenities and, and how it's development. So when we're talking about, and quality is definitely subjective. It's different for each individual, right? So that's just something for this board to consider. This plan doesn't set that. Just keep this in mind. This is a guidance document. Um, it, it doesn't set that. Your standards that set that will come through your, your development ordinances. Um, so with that, where are we going with our next uh, with next steps? Uh, where we proceed from here? So as I said uh, earlier, we have kind of moved. We've moved out of that phase one, which is our discovery phase. We're now into deep into our plan development phase, uh, and we anticipate that kind of running through uh, at least the end of January. Uh, in January, we will have our second public forum, um, and we'll, more details to come later on that. Uh, we are anticipating a the third week of this month, the steering committee reconvening to kind of review the comments and, and inf information from the pu public forum 
and some other data um, with regard to market analysis and some hopefully some conversation about strategies uh, in achieving these goals in this uh, second phase of the plan. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at the third phase uh, over the late winter to early spring of next year, early to middle spring of next year. And once again, this is not the, the document and it's in uh, as we would look for uh, adoption, this is just simply to show you the results of everything in total. Uh, given a last look, a, a review, comment, recommendations, um, where we need to improve what we need to see changed in the plan, and then we'll come back uh, for a, an actual public hearing and adoption, uh, hopefully shortly thereafter. Um, for the next slide, what can we anticipate? So obviously the complete printed plan, uh, a, a flip, uh, flip book, which can actually be embedded on a website. So, um, you know, doesn't need to, we don't have the need for, for actual print uh, uh, when it's unnecessary. Uh, in addition, we'll have a mobile device friendly format that we'll be pushing out as well uh, when, once the plan is complete. Um, and last but not least, we'll have the uh, companion summary and a poster that will fit neatly into the economic development packets, so hopefully a good tool for Chris. Um, we probably get more inquiries about our comprehensive plan, our outlook for certain areas of the county when, uh, when we're talking economic development from, from those seeking to develop job creators here in our community. So. Um, and with that, we'll end with any questions, comments you may have, or any direction you may have. I think we've probably got our questions and comments throughout the, the procedure. Yeah. Braxton, yeah. this was great. Mm -hmm. well, Thank you. Yes. Thank you for doing this. It was very helpful, Braxton. And we will have, hopefully, we'll, at the next meeting, the consultant will be here. We'll have a little more information for you. We had some in here, but I felt like holding you until 10 o'clock at night probably wasn't the best thing to do. Well, and you can definitely tell by this board that, that, that we all have the same goal, as I've heard Mr. Smith say before, about the road system and a path to get there might be a little bit different with, with, with the board members, but obviously with all the discussion we had while you were doing your presentation, we do care and we are passionate and we do want to please and do the best we can. And uh, that's... Hopefully we'll have some more discussion when the group comes. Is it the next meeting you said? November yes, 15th? the 15th. Yes, sir. They are slated to be here the 15th. Look so you may, see, you may see some repetitiveness in the information. They'll breeze over those, but there's some, there's some gaps. Some other well, give time to hear from the public and let it sink in. And Absolutely. And right. in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Is there anything for manager report or comment? Any board reports, comments? Mr. Chairman, I've got one thing, announcement to remind the board and, and all the citizens out there. The um, school system of Johnson County is sponsoring another tribute to veterans this year on Veterans Day, next Thursday of next week, I think, the 11th. And it will be a virtual this year. Hopefully we'll get back live next year, but it will be on, you can access it through their website, the, the school system's website. I don't know if we'll have a link uh, from our county or not, but perhaps we could create that. But I urge everybody to support and, and take a look at that uh, that virtual project. Right, There'll absolutely. be a good speaker on there, and uh, it's pretty much um, well. It's not like the live thing, but uh, it'll be a good program. Absolutely. Please, everybody, tune in and pay respect to your veterans and honor them. I know we had a lot going on this morning with my transition, and uh, I kind of blubbed up the, the proclamation a little bit, but hopefully everything was fine. And obviously, I'm a veteran, and I think this is probably the first time we've had, what, four veterans, four on, veterans on, on, on our board, board. serving. Yep. Mr. Smith, Mr. Brazel, Mr. Godwin, thank you for your service. Yeah, uh, self. We got Navy and Army representing. We don't have any Marines. We don't have any Force. Marines. Good. <laughs> 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 All right. I guess I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So I move to adjourn. Second. We got a motion. Got a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>